Hello, I'm June Edwards, and this is Senior Topics for the week of Jan uh, January. No, hardly. And this is Senior Topics for the week of May 24th, 2021. This is also the last day of the Senior Topics class for spring semester. Next week, we are off for a week, and then we will be back around uh, June 7th, I want to say. So let's get right into the calendar themes. And uh, I'm going to pull these out here and take a look at them. First of all, January 23rd was the start of what's known as National Backyard Games Week. And think about the kind of games that you used, used to play as a child growing up in your backyard. We liked hide and go seek. We liked freeze tag. We played croquet with the grownups. Uh, what other kinds of games? Hopscotch. And I'm sure you can name many, many, many more games. So what they suggest is that you take some time with your friends and, you know, seniors are grown up kids, so you can play some backyard games. It's beautiful, beautiful weather this week. You can create an afternoon or a night of games that you could all enjoy. And you could draw a map of the backyard of your facility and decide where you're going to go to watch the games or to play them. I've been teaching one of my grandsons had to play badminton. Unfortunately, one of the birdies made it up onto our roof and he's too young to go up there and get it. And I think I'm probably too old to go up and get it. So I'm gonna have to get uh, maybe my son or, his, or my grandson's father to go up there and get it down. But I have to get him in a good mood first. Also horseshoes, we've had a lot of fun with horseshoes. Those don't end up in the neighbor's backyard because they're weighted and they don't go as far. Uh, I'm thinking about teaching them croquet and of course ring toss and water balloon fights. I mean, there's just so many wonderful games and it brings a smile and laughter to all of us this week. Uh, who started this that proclaimed it National Backyard Games Day? I looked everywhere I could and there's no record it's just kind of the thing that evolved and people are doing it because we're all spending more time outside. So that's a good thing. Also, it was National Taffy Day on the 23rd and Lucky Penny Day. On the 24th is Victoria Day, which is celebrated in Canada. And that is the uh, day they remember their queen, Victoria and her marvelous rule of the British Empire. In 1830, on May 24th, the little story, Mary Had a Little Lamb, was published. And of course, we've all learned that. I don't know if kids learn that now. I hope they do. Mary Had a Little Lamb. Its fleece was white as, yeah, snow, was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. And so the teacher turned it out. And I cannot remember the rest of the poem. I just ran out of memories on it. Can you remember the rest of it? Can you say it? Yeah, if I, I'd like to hear you say it sometime. Okay. Moving on for the 24th, it's National Brother Day. Now, it doesn't say brotherhood, it says brother. So if you have a brother, give him a call and let, you, let him know you love him and pass good thoughts his way. It's also when the first Morse code message was sent from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore in 1844. 
Now, May 25th is National Missing Children's Day, and we have a national registry now to help us track any children that are missing. It is also National Tap Dance Day. I remember one of my students in my writing class would write stories out about being a tap dancer with the USO troops that first went back into the Philippines at the end of World War II. And she had a lot of would play her saxophone and tap dance at the same time. And how she had the breath to do all that, I do not know. But she's still quite an energetic lady in her 90s now. May 26th, Blueberry Cheesecake Day and National Sorry Day. Good time to apologize if there's something that you need to do that for. Now, on the 27th, on this day in 1937, the Golden Gate Bridge opened. And they painted gold. It's actually an orange that glistens like gold in the sunshine, and they are continually painting it. I knew a man who was a painter on the Golden Gate Bridge uh, many years ago, and they get so used to swinging from the cables, they're like mud, and they have safety nets under them, and they jump around, and when they're not painting, and he would tell us stories. His name was Lee, how they would grab a seagull and paint the tip of it with some orange paint. And after a while, there were so many birds that had been had the tips of their wings painted that the ornate. Hello, we're back. I don't know why we got bumped off. Uh, some kind of a glitch with the electricity. This is the senior topics meeting and it is for the week of May 23rd. I'm going to start over a little bit of it in case it doesn't record. Uh, National Backyard Day was, well, it's actually National Backyard Week. And what the idea is that you get together with your friends at your facility, or if there's kids around, some kids involved, and map out the backyard and play some games. Think about the games that you did as a child. Hide and go seek, freeze tag, jump rope, jacks, hopscotch, jump rope. I'm teaching my one of my grandsons how to play badminton. The problem is the birdies end up on the roof. He's got a pretty and retrieve them. And I think I'm too old to go up there and get him. I'm going to have to get his father to go up there, get him in a good mood and get him to climb up there and get the birdies back down. Okay, we're still uh, we're still going. Uh, we're getting glitches in the recording, and we're going to try to do the best we can and keep going, trying to get through the calendar week here. Hopefully, the electricity is not going to knock us off again. May twenty third, National Backyard Game Day, also Lucky Penny Day, National Taffy Day. On May 24th, it's Victoria Day in Canada, where they celebrate the marvelous reign of their Queen Victoria, who they dearly loved. <clears throat> Do you remember the old nursery rhyme? Mary. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. 
And so the teacher turned it out. And I can't remember the rest of Mary Had a Little Lamb. I hope you can remember it. It's funny how those things don't leave your memory. You might forget what happened yesterday, but things from your childhood we remember. Mary Had a Little Lamb was published in 1830 on this date, May 24th. It is also National Brother Day. So if you're thinking about your brother, if he's still alive, uh, give him a call. Let him know that you love him. And I'll try to do that for my brother today. And uh, that's his way. May 25th, National Missing Children's Day, National Tap Dance Day. I knew a lady that went in my creative writing class, and she was a member of the USO dance team, the first USO troop team that went back to the Philippines to entertain the troops at the end of World War II. And she had an act where she played the saxophone and tap danced at the same time. I don't know how she got the breath to do that, but she did. And uh, she's still alive today in her 90s and still a very spunky personality too. May 26th, National Sorry Day and Blueberry Cheesecake Day. That sounds good. May 27th, the Golden Gate Bridge opened and I have a picture of this. The bridge is always painted in, a, in an orange paint and it sparkles golden in the sunlight and continually painting it. I had a friend named Lee who many years ago was a painter on that bridge and they paint uh, all the way across the bridge and they wore safety cables and they had nets underneath them. And when they had breaks, they would jump down into the nets. They were real daredevils. One of the things they did, which is unofficial, of course, they would grab some of the seagulls and they would paint the tips of their wings with the orange paint. And the ornithologists who were studying birds found so many of these birds with this color of orange on the tips of the wings, they thought they had discovered a new species of bird. And of course it got figured out eventually that it was paint and it got traced back to the guys on the bridge. <laughs> and they, they got in some trouble, not too much, but they were definitely a lively and are a lively group of painters, of men painting. Okay, so then the 28th is National Hamburger Day. And the 29th, John F. Kennedy, one of our presidents, was born on this date in 1917. I always think of him as such a young man because when he died, he was still fairly young. Uh, it is also on the 29th, International Jazz Day. The 30th was when the ice cream freezer was patented. And I want you to think about one of your favorite kinds of ice creams and why you like it. And if you could create a new flavor of ice cream, what would it be? And what would you have in it? And the most fun part, I think, besides tasting it, what would you name it? Oh, you say you don't like ice cream? There are some people who do not like ice cream. Hard to believe, but that is true. All right, the last one, the most important one, I think. The traditional date for Memorial Day was May 30th. And there are many veterans organizations that would like it to go back to that day. But we make it the 31st at the very end of the month. When it was changed to May 31st, many of the veterans groups felt that people would uh, remember, of course, that it's the beginning of summer, but they might forget about the seriousness of remembering our fallen heroes who died 
fighting for our country. And we never, ever want to forget them. Even though with the COVID restrictions, uh, a lot of places have been shut down. They're not holding ceremonies at most of the parks, but many of the veterans groups and other patriotic groups are still going to go in today and they are planning on going in and um, cleaning the graves. I don't know if the Boy Scouts are going this weekend to put the small flags on their graves, but some people are putting reefs at the entrance to the veterans cemeteries. And we need to remember our fallen heroes. And we'll talk about that today too. If we're not knocked off again, we've gone nine minutes this time without being knocked off the air. Uh, you never know with the electricity. I did want to talk about a quick review of what we've been covering over this entire spring semester. We have gone for 18 weeks without a break and we will not be meeting next week. We'll get one week off before the start of the summer quarter. But back in January, we talked about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his life and ideals. And I deeply believe in what he said in his, I have a dream speech. He said, I have a dream that one day that we will remember and judge people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And there will not be prejudice against black or white or brown or any other shade of any other color. Okay, the fourth week of January, we talked about winter weather extremes and some of the terrible blizzards going on back east. We talked about the history of jigsaw puzzles, the latest information on getting your vaccines, which were just starting to be rolled out last January. By now, in May, the end of May, more than 50% of Americans have received their vaccination and are considered safe if they do get the COVID-19. It's such a very, very light case in the majority of cases, 95% cases. So uh, seniors, it's like over 90% have been vaccinated and that's even better. In February, we talked about Freedom Day, Groundhog Day, Weatherman's Day, and the invention of the game of Monopoly. We also talked about Boy Scout Day, Benjamin Franklin and Inventors Day, Abraham Lincoln's birthday, George Washington's birthday, Valentine's Day, and Mardi Gras. February is one of the busiest months of the year. In March, we talked about National Science Day, Tell a Fairy Tale Day, Dr. Seuss's birthday and reading across America and how our national anthem started. We also talked about some real life stories of positive change and how people are surviving and beginning to come out of the pandemic in our country. International Women's Day and Daylight Savings Time were some of the topics in March. We also went into April, we talked about Easter, National Puppy Day, Common Courtesy Day, the mysterious magician, Harry Houdini, and how April is Poetry Month. And then we came up to May and we talked about the Hubble Telescope and the discoveries in outer space the Dana Point whales and dolphins that are migrating back up north as we speak, May Day with flowers, National Teachers Day, Cinco de Mayo, uh, Star Trek Day, May the 4th or Force Be With You Day, Mother's Day, and of course we know Father's Day 
is coming up very shortly in June. And Armed Forces Day. Now today we're going to talk somewhat about Memorial Day. And it's really important that we take time and we want to let me get these papers here. Remembering our fallen heroes. And I love this picture of the little boy who is cleaning some of the gra graves and they've got their flags out. He's with the Boy Scouts, but more than the Boy Scouts go out and clean these flags. And uh, back in 2018, you could see how beautiful they looked along, not just our national Arlington National Cemetery, but in our own area, the cemeteries. I'd like to give you nine interesting facts about Memorial Day. It is more than the unofficial start to summer. Number one, Memorial Day did not officially become a federal holiday until 1971. It started back at the end of the Civil War. And that's when General John A. Logan, the Mandarin commander in chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, which was a union veterans group, issued a decree that May 30th should be recognized nationwide as the day to commemorate the more than 620,000 soldiers killed in the recently ended Civil War. They called it Decoration Day. And that first year, 27 states adopted it. And by 1890, all the states had declared it a state holiday. But for 50 years, it was only to remember those who had died in the Civil War. Number two, the date of May 30 was chosen because it was a day that did not fall on a Civil War battle anniversary. Number three, when Memorial Day was officially adopted as a federal holiday, the date was changed to the last Monday in May. Many veterans organizations were concerned Americans would just consider it a three-day holiday and forget about the vets. But uh, still, many organizations do remember the veterans, and we want to remember those who have fallen. During World War I, it was called Remembrance Day. I can remember my grandmother still referring to it as Remembrance Day. Number four, one Memorial Day tradition is to have all the flags fly at half staff until noon and then raise the flag to the top of the pole. Now, I hadn't heard that one before, but the first part of the day is in honor of those who sacrificed their lives while serving. The last half of the day is in honor of those who are serving right now, overseas, in our country, wherever they may be. The next one, in 2000, Congress passed the National Monument of Remembrance Act, which requires all Americans to pause at three o'clock for one minute and remember those who have died serving their country. The next one, where was the first Memorial Day celebrated? Well, there are three places that claim that honor. Warrington, Virginia, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and Savannah, Georgia. Nobody really knows for sure. And why do people wear a red poppy on their shirt? That originated from the poem in Flanders Field, written by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a British man, in 1915 during World War I. And I want to read that to you in just a few minutes. In 1924, facing a shortage of poppies because it quickly became popular to wear the red poppy, the first artificial poppy factory was opened in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Who did they employ? 
out of work veterans. I love that. The last fact, number nine, one longstanding Memorial Day tradition to honor our late veterans and troops is to hold a picnic on the grounds of a military cemetery and to also take time and clean off the graves and place the small flags to remember them. Well, I want to talk about in Flanders fields. I know that school children in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s were required to memorize that poem. It was written during First World War by Canadian. I'm sorry, he did fight in the British Army, but he was Canadian. He was a Canadian doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. He was inspired to write the poem on May 3, 1915, after presiding over the funeral of friend and fellow soldier, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, who died in the Second Battle of Ypres in France. It was one of the most quoted poems from the war. He, uh, I was interested in poetry at a young age. His poetry often focused on death and the peace that follows after. He saw so much death. It literally wore his body out and he died from exhaustion and pneumonia several years later. He had enrolled at the age of 41 with the Canadian Expeditionary Group following the outbreak of the First World War. He volunteered to join a fighting unit as a gunner and medical officer. He had also fought in the Second Boer War with a volunteer force. He considered himself a soldier first and a doctor second. And I do have a picture of him. You can see the picture of him there. In his diary, he wrote, the battle was a nightmare. For 17 days and 17 nights, none of us have had our clothes off nor our boots even, except occasionally. And all that time while I was awake, gunfire and rifle fire never ceased for 60 seconds. This is when they were attacking, um, the Ger when the Germans had attacked French positions with chlorine gas on April 22nd, 1915. The Canadians held on with the French for over two weeks. Behind it all, he wrote, was the constant background of the sights of the dead, the wounded, the maimed, and a terrible anxiety, lest the line should give way. Alexis Helmer, a close friend, was killed during the battle on May 2nd. McRae performed the burial service himself, at which time he noted how quickly the poppies grew around the graves of those who died. The next day he composed the poem while sitting in the back of an ambulance in an advanced dressing station outside of Ypres. Today this site is known as the John McRae Memorial Site. And here we have the words. <clears throat> if you know it, you can say it with me. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with those who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. He wrote it on scraps of paper, and he wrote it in such despair. And then... He was not satisfied with his work, 
So we crumpled the paper up and threw it away. Luckily for us, it was retrieved by a fellow member of his unit, either Edward Morrison or J.M. Elder. McRae was convinced to submit the poem for publication. And um, an early copy of the poem is found in the diary of Claire Goss, who served with McRae as a battlefield nurse in an entry dated October 30, 1915, nearly six weeks before the poem's first publication on December 8, 1915. So that is the poem, and it, it is very moving, very, very moving. And I think I'm going to end at this point. I did one, a picture of hope, and this was painted by Norman Rockwell during World War II. It shows the soldier coming home. And there's the people in the tenement building. There's the girlfriend over on the side. She's wounded for him. She's so happy he's back. And his mother with her arms flung wide. Father's not far behind. And with that, I will say goodbye. Have a wonderful week off. And we'll see you during summer quarter, the week of June 7th. Bye, everybody. Stay safe. Stay happy. And be kind to one another. Bye. <laughs>